Hi, in this video series I'm going to introduce the concept of Bayesian statistical analysis and how it can be applied in IBM SPSS statistics. Now to begin with, we're going to focus on the background to the Bayesian approach and its theoretical foundations. But much of the subject matter I'm going to be talking about in these videos is directly contrasted with traditional statistical analysis and particularly concepts like hypothesis testing and p-values. So if you need to brush up on that knowledge, I recommend you check out our existing materials such as the recorded webinar, how to interpret significance tests, or my blog post, Making Sense of Significance Tests. These days, much of modern statistical analysis is split between two very different approaches. Until relatively recently, most students of statistics, and certainly the overwhelming majority of statistical analysis programs, like SPSS or STATA or SAS, have followed what is often referred to as the frequentist tradition. This is the world of the null hypothesis test, p-values, alpha levels, confidence intervals, and statistical significance. And it was pioneered by a relatively small group of statisticians in the 20th century, many of whom, it has to be said, didn't agree entirely with one another. And that the vanguard of this approach was Sir Ronald Fisher, and he's often referred to as the father of modern statistics. His contemporary Carl Pearson developed many of the most commonly used statistical techniques, such as chi-squared tests and the Pearson correlation coefficient. Carl Pearson's son, Egon Pearson, and his collaborator, Jersey Naimon, went on to develop concepts like power analysis and confidence intervals. We compare and contrast that approach, the frequentist tradition, to the Bayesian tradition. And this is named after the Reverend Thomas Bayes. He was an early 18th century English Presbyterian minister. And living two centuries earlier, he actually wasn't a very prolific author. Indeed, the seminal work in probability theory was constrained to a single essay that was only published after his death by his friend Richard Price. And the central ideas in this essay were later taken up and developed by mathematicians such as Pierre Simon Laplace. What made Bayes' approach to probability so different from the later frequentist paradigm was its focus on blending expertise with evidence. Now before we even get into that, you might be wondering, well, why are we even talking about the Bayesian approach to statistical analysis, particularly as we already have a frequentist approach, right, which is already, you know, pretty pretty functionally rich. There are many different techniques in there which deal with many different problems. Well, one of the reasons is simply that there's been an increasing usage of Bayesian techniques uh, in research articles. They've become much more popular in recent years and decades in the research and academic arenas. We can see this simply in the number of times they've been mentioned. Why is that? Well, one, one possible reason is advances in computing technology. Bayesian approaches have typically required more computing power. So to some extent, the frequentist tradition had a bit of a head start on the Bayesian approach before computing power became less of an issue and it caught up. And as a result of that, the very first sorts of techniques and procedures which were, which were integrated into tools like SAS and, and SPSS would have been frequentist approaches. Uh, second, thirdly, um, some researchers feel that Bayesian approaches uh, work better with small samples. Again, this would be something that would be very attractive to many researchers with limited resources to gather large samples. Uh, a fourth element is the replication crisis. This is an ongoing methodological crisis in which it has been found that m the results of many famous scientific studies, uh, particularly in social sciences, are difficult or uh, are impossible to reproduce. And some researchers have argued that traditional approaches, the frequentist approach that rely on rejecting the null hypothesis are too arbitrary or are insufficiently strict so you can see how this would bring pressure if you like on the frequentist paradigm. Uh, some uh, researchers argue that Bayesian techniques offer greater flexibility when dealing with complex experimental designs. Another argument is that Bayesian, uh, the Bayesian emphasis on evidence-based interpretations is in many cases more intuitive and helpful when making sense of results. And lastly, uh, Bayesian concepts have often been taken up by the machine learning community and they've been incorporated in several popular algorithms. So they're getting a certain degree of visibility uh, that perhaps they hadn't, uh, hadn't had traditionally. 
Now if we want to compare and contrast the frequentist tradition to the Bayesian approach, we can see that there are some fundamental differences from a theoretical grounding between the two different paradigms. The first is this concept of where probabilities come, some, come from. So in the frequentist tradition, probabilities are related simply to how frequently something occurs, hence frequentist. The Bayesian approach is subtly different. It tends, tends to say that probabilities are related to our level of certainty or uncertainty of something. So it's a slightly more subtle uh, contextual approach where it starts to look at evidence and our level of certainty around that. Uh, secondly, in the frequentist approach, the data is everything. Everything is driven by the data. If you want to know the probability of something, you simply look at the data and the data will tell you or estimate the probability uh, or parameter from that. Whereas in the Bayesian approach, data is really important, but the context is also important. What you know about the data and what you know about the situation before you even collect it is taken into consideration. In the frequentist approach, the parameter is a fixed value. This is right at the heart of the frequentist tradition that the parameter is, is the population mean, let's say, or the population standard deviation or the, the true correlation between two, two variables. It's an actual value that exists out there and it's unknowable. So you're trying to estimate um, at that value, which is, which is unknowable, but it's a specific value. Whereas the Bayesian approach is that the parameter is in fact a random variable. It's, it's more of a zone within which a parameter lies. So it's not necessarily seen as a fixed value at all. In fact, it's not seen as a fixed value. It's seen as, as a random uh, va a variable that, uh, that can take on different, uh, different values depending on the situation. Uh, that means that the frequentist tradition, the truth is fixed, but the estimation itself is uncertain. So the model may vary, you know, you know, you can estimate a different model, but the, the and the model may may estimate the truth to a varying degrees of accuracy, but the truth is fixed. Whereas if you start to think of the parameter as a random variable, it means that it becomes uncertain. It lies within a certain zone, but the estimation itself is fixed. The model itself doesn't change. The estimation lies within a certain zone, and we'll see an example of this in a moment. And um, but that's a fundamental. Uh, difference in approach and, and philosophy. Um, the, the other aspect of it is that frequentist uh, approaches relate only to the null hypothesis. When we calculate a p-value in a frequentist approach, it simply tells us the probability of getting a result as extreme as the one observed in the universe, if you like, where the null hypothesis is true. And that allows us to either reject the null hypothesis or not reject the null hypothesis. It's very much one dimensional. It doesn't say anything about the alternative hypothesis. Whereas in the Bayesian tradition, it relates to both the, the null and the alternative hypothesis. So you can see how that would be attractive to people when you have a tradition or an approach which aims to say something about both the null and the alternative hypothesis. Um, the frequentist tradition only uses the collected data nothing else, nothing else is used. If you want to try and estimate the probability or estimate a parameter value, you're only using the collected data, nothing else. Whereas something which is absolutely uh, fundamental in the Bayesian approach is that it uses the collected data, but it also uses an estimate of the truth in the absence of any data. And this is easily the most contentious aspect uh, of the differences between the frequentist and the Bayesian approach. The Bayesian approach makes a statement about what is likely uh, before the data is even collected. This is known as the prior probability, and we'll come to that in a, in a moment. In the meantime, what we need to bear in mind, of course, is that both approaches, uh, generally speaking, are going to, to yield very similar results. You know, they, they generally don't disagree with each other. So uh, that's something to bear in mind. It's not that one is revolutionarily different, or you're going to find that uh, that using a Bayesian approach, uh, you'll end up having completely different conclusions about your data in most cases. We shall finish up in this section looking at a concrete example of the differences between uh, frequentist and Bayesian approaches with something as simple as trying to estimate where a mean value is likely to lie. Uh, and that would refer to things like confidence intervals. In the frequentist tradition, these are called confidence intervals. In the Bayesian approach, they're referred to as credible intervals. Now, 
the frequentist definition of confidence intervals goes something like if we were to repeat the analysis many times, 95% of the computed confidence intervals would contain the true value. And one of the things that's, that lecturers and statisticians go to great pains to teach students about is that what we're not saying is that, is that there is a 95% probability that the true value lies within these confidence intervals. What we're saying is, is that 95% of the computed confidence intervals would contain the true value. That's not the same thing. And that's, that's a difficult thing for a lot of non-experts to understand. If you compare and contrast that uh, with the Bayesian approach to, credible, to its credible intervals, the Bayesian approach is much more intuitive. It simply says, based on our data, there is a 95% probability that the parameter lies within the credible region. So it, it also creates intervals, just like confidence intervals, calls them credible intervals. And it literally says there's a 95% probability that the parameter lies within the credible region. What's going on here? Well, as we said earlier on, in the frequentist tradition, the thing which is variable is the estimate, the model, if you like, is variable. So 95% of the computed intervals uh, would contain the true value. The true value is fixed. The true value is that, whereas in the Bayesian approach, it's actually saying that the uh, the estimate is fixed. It's saying there's a 95% probability that the parameter lies within this region. That's the thing which is variable. So right away there, we see a subtle but fundamental difference between the frequentist and Bayesian approach simply to estimating something like uh, where a mean value is likely to lie within a population.